It's Wednesday. I've got a blanket and a space heater. <laughs> And I'm sitting in the sun like a cat. Um, so I am doing something I call my power hour that I do every single day. It's like a pocket of time that I sit down and I reply to messages. I share some piece of my journey on social media and I invite people to join me and I follow up with all you guys. Um, but someone that I've been chatting with who I went to high school with, she messaged me back about bar and she was like, tell me your story. Hi. And so I was like, oh, where do I begin? So I was, t- I was typing out my story. You know, my story is that I, I never felt like I belonged in high school. And I actually, Marshall and I met in high school. We went to this small Lutheran high school. And um, yeah, so we met in this small Lutheran high school. And then he was two years ahead of me. He graduated and he went, he went off and joined boot camp. He joined the Marines, went to boot camp. And I transferred schools. I went from a small private school that I had started in first grade and went all the way through 10th grade. And then I transferred over to this huge public school. Total fish out of water. I mean, I'd gone through school with the same 30 people every single, every single year for all the, for like freaking nine years, 10 years. And I, I didn't know, like I was so sheltered. I was so sheltered and I was so painfully shy. I didn't know how to break into, into those, into new friendships. And so I just kind of like stayed in my own lane and I kept my head down and I would hang, I was the weirdo that was like, I was on the school newspaper and I was, um, I would hang out with my teachers and I just, I was weird. I was weird. And I think that all my peers thought I was stuck up just because I was so shy. And so I didn't know how to like people. And, um, I wound up graduating from there, but I never made any real good friendships. And so now the beauty of social media is you reconnect with people and you're like, man, like, I can't believe we didn't hang out more. We have so much in common, like at our core belief system and stuff. But I was messaging this girl and I was thinking about when I went, when I started at West Seattle, I vomited first period every single day. I had this, I had the, the freaking football coach was my first period teacher. And I don't know, I don't even remember what that class was, but I just remember that I puked every single morning, like the first half of my, of my junior year in high school, I would vomit. And then I would eat lunch in a bathroom stall. I would bring my lunch and I would eat my lunch in the bathroom stall. And I don't remember how long I did that. I think probably the first whole quarter. And then I found, like, I had an art teacher, an art teacher that took me under his wing, and I would, then I would hang out in his, in his, in his uh, portable, and I don't know, I mean, it's just, I never felt like I belonged. And so, as I was typing it out, I was like, this is part of my story, was the fact that I never felt like I belonged, and that's the thing about coaching, is that I found the place I belonged. I found the place that I belonged and I found a way to create that kind of community for other people that are just like me. And so some of you are like, that's really lame. She ate her lunch in the bathroom, like how pathetic. But, um, but it's part of who I am and it's part of my story and it's given me so much empathy for other people and underdogs and people who just don't feel like they belong. So I've been doing a lot of personal development around that and I had an aha the other day um, about like, you know, because all the things that like we struggle with, most of those were, were happened in your first like seven, eight years of life, you know? Um, and that feeling of not belonging and feeling like I'm going to be left behind and then putting up protective barriers and walls so that we don't get hurt. I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. But I was typing this out. She's like, what's your story? And I was like, oh my God, what's my story? My story is that I was lost. I was lost for forever. Marshall... I graduated in 97. We got married in 98. He was in the Marine Corps. I moved to San Diego. We lived in this apartment building in El Cajon. And I had no friends. I had no friends. (laughs) And no friends. And he wasn't like, he was in this like weird little unit. Like I think he was doing the color guard back then. There was like four other guys. And we were just not in the same like season of life as any of those other guys. Like they were either playboys or they were married but they had kids and we were like nowhere near interested in having kids I'm over here with my cat and so I was super lonely I actually put this like like I'm like (laughs) friend watch it sign up in the laundry room of our apartment and no one of course no one ever replied to the crazy lady asking for to make a friend but 
season after season after season, as we've moved and we've gone through different experiences and we moved to new places, I've been that girl again. Like that, I'm lonely, I need to make a friend, but I'm so scared, I don't know how to make those friends. And so I'm so grateful for coaching for so many reasons, but really that it's given me a community of you guys who get it, and a lot of you have lived some form of that. Maybe some of you have, and you're like, well, that's really sad. Um, but this gave me, this has given me the platform. And so we got married in 98. I got hijacked there. We got married in 98. We lived, he got out of the Marine Corps in 2000. And, um, and then I found Starbucks. And the thing I loved about Starbucks was there was like guiding principles. I don't even know what they call them anymore, but like be welcoming, be genuine, be considerate. And like, I found my place and I could step into the green apron. It was kind of like a superhero thing where I was like, shy Sarah didn't exist. Shy Sarah couldn't be here. Shy Sarah had to show up and talk to people. I had to make people feel welcome. I had to make people feel like I was happy to see them. And so it really, it helped develop me into this sort of extroverted introvert and know that, you know, I'm not going to die if I have to talk to people (laughs) that I don't know. And so Starbucks was very much that place of like, you belong here and you could sit with me and as weird as that sounds, like that's what Beachbody is to me. It feels like a different shade of Starbucks. It's like that same culture and that same community, except for we're not pushing coffee drinks. We're, we're pushing health and belonging and finding like just living your best, healthiest, happiest life. And so I'm really grateful. I'm grateful that I went through all those things. Like I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change the fact that I left that small private school that I went to that public school where I didn't quite fit because it gave me that layer of empathy and that layer of need to like belong and to create that place for other people to create that community. And so that's what I've done with the positive vibe tribe. Like that's why I created it. I wanted it to be a safe space for women of all different seasons and all different cultures and all different just like current life situations that they belong and they matter and they're seen and you can sit here with me and we don't have to have the same viewpoint in life, but let's all get better together. I freaking love it. So coaching, I think a lot of people think it's just about freaking superfoods and doing your workouts. Yeah, that's a piece of it. Like you have to love it and live it and want to share that with other people. Like if you haven't had a personal If you, not so much personal transformation, but if you don't believe in it, then why would you be a coach sharing about it? You know what I mean? Some of you are just coaches for the discount. It's totally cool. You matter. You can sit here too. But I'm just so grateful that I found this thing and that it's so funny how all those little seasons, all those layers, all those seasons of hard fold into that. And here I am in this new season of not quite knowing my place and thinking maybe I'm too sparkly or maybe I'm too loud or maybe I need to stop being so positive or I need to stop sharing. But I was like, fuck that. Like, this is who I am. (laughs) Take it or leave it. I don't really care. I don't have to sit in the bathroom anymore eating my lunch because now I sit in my own house in the sunshine with all my cats. (laughs) And you can just keep on going by if it's not your cup of tea. But I wanted to share that with you guys because I think sometimes, a lot of times, we watch other people from the sidelines and we're like, oh, I could never do that. Or, no, I couldn't. That's not me. Or, that's not my story. Or, that's not my passion. And my story isn't your story. You have your own story and you've had your own circumstances and your own struggles and your own hearts and your own wins. And I want you to honor them and not feel like you need to fit into a certain mold to have success. I just want you to own your own journey and celebrate it all along the way. So, That's a piece of my story that I don't know that I've shared before, that I was the girl sitting in the bathroom. The mom in me is like, ew, that's so gross. It's dirty in there. But I was just so scared of not belonging and it was safer just to hide. And so I don't want to hide anymore. That's that's part of my evolution and my onion that I'm peeling is I don't want to hide. I want to be me. And I want to make sure that the people that feel the way I used to feel and still sometimes feel know that they can sit here and that they belong here. True story. So anyways, there you go. That's a piece of my story. (laughs) If you want to chat with me, you know the drill. Drop a comment, send me a message. But um, I'm just, I'm really grateful. I'll say it again and again, and I will do this forever, even if you know, for some reason the money piece goes away, which it won't. But if it did, I would do this because this is my heart and it's my passion and it's my purpose. And I think that those are really important things. And when you can live all of them and create an income 
and rewrite your family's future and break up with generational shit, that's powerful.